Hi, welcome to The Witch and Words. I wasn't going to do a video this week because who wants to edit during a heatwave? And um, we're set to have the highest temperatures we've ever had, um, possibly over the weekend. Uh, peaking at 40 degrees, it's going to be like being in Greece. So, I didn't want to edit a lot, so I thought I would maybe do a short, sort of short single take couple of introductions so I thought I'd show you around my garden to show you the progress before I water it all again I did that this morning but it's going to need a lot of water for tomorrow it's going to be really hot and then I've actually cleaned and redecorated my house this week just finished in time for the heat wave and due to that I've put all my furniture in the corner in the shade um, I've got this blind up and some neck curtains up to keep me cool in here keep the cats cool because they have fur um but anyway it's all gone quite sort of minimal and beige so i thought i'd show you a little around my attempted minimalism house apparently i can't do anything without clutter so i put everything back where it was pretty much apart from this candlestick which i think might go in the alcove and I've tidied up and bought a new bookcase and so I thought I'd show you quickly around my books, quick tour of my books um, and their vast range here, well mostly esoteric books to be honest um, but first quickly let's take a little tour of my garden out here uh -huh, my cats is home hot enough for you. So these are my tomatoes which have been wilting for days. Um, they're really against this white wall here. But I got some tomatoes in there. Just waiting for those to start right now. I've got lots of tomatoes. I've been a bit slack. I have to go around and pick off all the suckers. Actually, I'm not doing too bad. I think I'll pick that one off. So, really taking over. They're just growing wild. Um, I've got a hedgehog visiting. So he's left little hedgehog poos everywhere. Um, some things have died in the heat here. Sadly, one of my trees died. But apparently, the other tree that is in that pot maybe keeping the uh, roots alive. I put my temperature thing set up. It's actually quite warm again. Uh, let's see where we get to. It's about 27 on the minute. And it's about 6, 7 o'clock. Um, I've... Everything's quite flattened with the heat, to be honest. Things are having a hard time. Um, need a bit of shade, so I've got some chairs out. The cats are finding cool places. And Gypsy. Gypsy's just had an operation, so she's got no teeth left now. Yeah. Poor little girl. Archie just lives in the woods. And Mungo we hardly ever see. Comes home to sleep. So I've got some peas. They're coming up. I had a few of those the other day. That's nice. Jack has settled in. Aren't you Jack? And I've got a little solar fountain on the pond which is keeping it fresh. And I saw a frog in there the other day. So I'm not sure if he's there now. Tiny little frog. And the two, um, got some waves over here. This one just wants feeding, don't you? Yeah, you might get fed. And you're gonna help yourself anyway, aren't you? Oh. So these two are not my cat. <laughs> This one might be soon. You poor little old man. I 
feel sorry for that one. Um, I've got some very small dwarf beans down here. It's all the beans that came up, everything else that came up as weeds. Oh, my child has recovered. That was a bit wilted this afternoon. Peace to be well. Everything else is suffering in the heat. Roses. So, and I think that one's died in the heat, so I've moved it into the shade. And the lilies are having a hard time, and the roses are having a hard time as well. Treat that to some attention soon. It's because watering can again. Everything in the pot is gonna drought really badly tomorrow, imagine. Um, some flowers coming up, not many flowers in here this year. Just those, really. And I'll be getting in that pond later. I like these little pink flowers, I don't know. Lilies are a bit having a hard time in there. So, we've got shady spots. We'll keep cool tomorrow. Hedgehog poo. So, anyway, back into my rather cool house. Um, some of it needs. They're settled. I thought I'd show you a look around my books. So hopefully that is a full battery now. <laughs> the battery died. Um, yeah, I'm really looking forward to this heat wave because when I was about four, five, no, actually I moved into Alice and I was five, and then there was, I would have been about three. I lived in Cyprus, um, and apparently we only lived there for about six months, but it feels to me like it was a lifetime, and I've always missed it. So I've got my hair and pigtails to remind me of my younger self. I'm waiting for the 42 degrees to hit, kick in. I'm, I'm probably going to get in a paddling pool. Um, so I really, I really want to uh, remember that heat. I think last time it was 40 degrees. I was probably in India. Um, anyway, so I'm going to edit very little. Uh, excuse the slackness of my attitude to a video. <laughs> And we're going to bring the camera right over here and start on my bookshelf. So, um, these are in no particular order. Maybe I should put them by authors. But first of all, the Green Hedge Witch, Ray Beth. Um, I liked that book. It's not my favourite. Um, it's very environmental, this one. So, it's all about saving the trees, saving the planet, positive spells to do for environmentalism so that's the flavour of that one this is highly controversial the holy kingdom by adrian gilbert um, he and his uh, co-authors have written a lot about the real king arthur um, and his location in britain where he may actually be buried who may actually have been um, due to the records, the Welsh records, the Welsh annals, he can prove, he says, that Arthur was a real man um, and it's really interesting, although it comes highly controversially, um, people are kind of criticise him quite a lot for making up his facts. Got to say, I've not read the book. I watched a YouTube video and I thought there must be more information in the book, but it's on the pile of, I bought this one one day, I'll read it. So I've got two copies of Folk Witchcraft by Roger J. Horn. 
Um, this is the newer version. I enjoyed the first one and that one's expanded. So um, when I've forgotten, you know, the gist of it, I'll go back and read that one again with more to it. I have a must book. The Secret Commonwealth of Elves, Fairies and Fawns by um, uh, Robert Kirk. So this is Scottish folklore collected by a reverend about fairy law in Britain, um, fairy feasts, fairy places, fairy abductions. Um, I'm going to have to edit this now. <laughs> oh, it's going to be tricky. So, um, Witchcraft and Secret Societies in Rural England. This is by Nigel Panic. Very interesting book. Toad Men, um, Horse Whisperers, Plough Mummers, Bone Witches. So this is tradition of uh, folklore of mostly the Fens. Um, and of course, The Cornish Book of Ways by Gemma Gary. Beautiful book full of traditional witchcraft law written in a style that's it's very uh, understandable, it's very easy read um, and there's a lot of practical to do help yourself kind of tips for traditional witchcraft. A must book, The Complete Book of Incenses, Oils and Brews by Cunningham. A great source of magic herbs and plants as is the Encyclopedia of Magical Herbs, also by Cunningham. And these two are really good reference books if you want to just quickly look up the Magical Association of Herbs and Plants. The Elder Gods, Stephen Pollington. This is about Saxon, um, the other world in Saxon England. It's quite an interesting book. There's a lot of it. I'm, just a few chapters in, um, there's a lot of information there and if you're interested in Anglo-Saxon Britain and Norse mythology, I would say that was a really good book to read. Um, likewise, Trollton by Johan um, Bjorn Garbeck, uh, that's an interesting read, full of spells. Um, about a, a quarter of the way through it because the first bit is very interesting, then there's a long list of spellcraft, so I kind of stopped reading it. I'll come, I go in and out of it now. Um, Denisovan Origins and the Cygnus Key by Andrew Collins. I bought these because I was fascinated by the subject. Um, the Denisovan Origins talks about the origins of shamanism and art and other um, cultural um, the beginning points in the Denisovan cultures, um, which is science is beginning to refer to a little bit more now. The Cygnus Key is about the importance of the star Cygnus, swans and swan shamanism at Gobekli Tepe, Gobekli Tepe and um, way back in the earlier states of civilization. Then this is a brilliant book, Neil Gaiman's North Mythology. Now that's a really lovely way to read the Norse myths, I think. I like that one, I like the way he tells the story and it's a friendly, modern, amenable access into Norse mythology. Bioenergetics, Alexander Lowen, or Lowen. This is an amazing book and I read this 30 years ago now, uh, sold my copy and replaced my copy. So this hasn't been booked but hasn't been read but it's on my bookshelf as a reference book really. Um, and this is about doing energetic exercises to release trauma in the body, to connect with the breath um, and if you try any of the exercises they're very, very powerful and um, bioenergetics, it's kind of the origin of rebirthing, if you've heard of rebirthing. So it's about using movement and exercise and breathwork together to release stored trauma. This book was recommended to me, The Jesus Mystery, and this is about the pagan origins of Jesus. 
Um, I haven't read that yet, I've got to admit, but I've bought a copy. Then a little book of Tarot Companion, it's just a basic guide to all the tarot cards, but it doesn't have reverse meanings, so I bought another one as well because mm, that was okay, but not the best of a read. Northern Magic and Mysteries, Edred Thorson, that's good, that's um, rune bindings, rune um, sigils really, and ways to work rune magic. Uh, Whites and Ancestors by Jenny Blaine, it's a lovely little read all about Anglo-Saxon white. Moving on quickly. The Mabinogian, that has to be a must on anybody's bookshelf if you're interested in Celtic Druidry um, or even British magic. You've got to know the stories in the Mabinogian. Then I have Celtic Fairy Shamanism 1, 2 and Doorways of the Other World 3. And these are by Catherine James. She is a Welsh witch, a Welsh seer, works shamanically um, and has also created this deck of cards, but it's a deck of cards you create yourself um, with the keys of um, these secret sacred symbols. And these are stories of her childhood and of magic in Wales, in the Welsh landscape. Um, then I've got the only Pensac book I've got at the moment. I have read the the Shadow. Uh, um, did it? I can't remember. Was it the Inner Temple? The one about a shadow as well. I've had a couple, um, and I read them a while ago. The Witch's Coin, Prosperity Magic. Yeah, it's a spell book. It's got uh, many different recipes in uh, many different uh, you know formulas. The thing I did like about this was the information to sort of work on your own inner being when it comes to prosperity, to work with your own issues and to make magic from that point of understanding your own attitude to prosperity. The House Witch, that's a must. Um, I've read a little bit of it. Um, it's another one I intend to delve into here and there, dip into. Uh, the Irwin Alone, Joanna van der Hoven, is, um, she's a very nice author on writing about druidic ways. It's beautifully written, it's just a gentle read, um, so I recommend that. And this is also the same author, um, Aaron Murphy Hickok. Aaron Murphy Hiscock. Um, this one's about body care, um, body lotions, bath lotions. Um, this one's about plants, uh, flowers and essential oils. Again, I've not read that. I've read a little of that. And this one's about, you know, home blessing, things like that. So there's a nice sort of rounder um, education there. I bought this little book in a bargain bookshop, Spells of Mindfulness. That's nice, that's about positive attitudes. I have this very old book, Practical Techniques of Psychic Self-Defense by Murray Hope. Um, and a brilliant author, got to have a few of those, I think. I've also got, um, I'll show you if we get that. <laughs> the Little Book of Earth Magic, I found that really lovely. Um, Nice little read, nice little gathering of spells, nice little handy, beautifully bound book. Um, Tarot Companion, that's a nice book, that's a very basic um, reading for each card um, and it's got good information. And I found all these in the bargain bookshop, you know the one. <laughs> and the Green, um, Green Wicker Spell Book, that's a nice little book. It's okay. I think I preferred the Earth Magic book. Um, but, you know, just a, a nice little collection of spells. Then, um, going down the shelves, I think I'll just cover things briefly, otherwise this will be a very long video. Fairy Wicker, volumes 1 and 2, Kiss McKay, Stepanich. I replaced this, so I bought it a second-hand copy, which is 
falling apart at the seams really and then I bought a better version of book two these are great I love these as path workings of shamanic fairy uh, magic um, how to meet your spiritual benefactor how to journey to meet your guides how to really work on a symbolic level with um, certain keys with certain times of the year um, it's very shamanic and it's packed with information so if you're interested in that they are two good volumes i like them uh, spellcraft for hedge which is ray beth this one's about spells of justice of um, empowerment uh, of healing our lives basically so each rebirth book has a theme and this one's about healing yourself whereas the green witch is about healing the earth this is a little volume of the way into fairy that's a sweet little read about fairy lore and um, this is a very old book that was bought to me a book of pagan rituals this has got everything that you need as a basic beginner to learn and initiate yourself into witchcraft i don't know if they sell that anymore that was uh, bought many many years ago now the book of druidry by ross nichols ross nichols was the former head of the druidic order before philip carr gone he wrote this book um a lot of it pe a lot of people say it's a bit fantasized it's about the history of druidism related to greek and roman mythology related to all sorts of mysteries i love it i think that's a must if you're into druidry ellen of the ways nice little slim volume of that um which is quite a famous book sacred sounds ted andrews now this is a brilliant book um transformation through music and words so he goes into sacred ways to create rhymes spells um and magical chants it's really packed with a lot of information based on um research really of how magical rhymes magical phrases magical words can be used for magical sounds this is a very old book the way of the goddess a manual for wiccan initiation it's very old it came out of a caravan it's a bit moldy but it's an absolute must have book i think um so that talks about drawing down the moon opening circles and it's very much of a golden dawn kind of tradition very ritual magic um so i like that book um, I hope you can see the authors because I'm not very good at explaining this. Now then, Albert Villaldo, Shaman Healer Sage. This is a really good book. Um, I love this. The, a couple of Alberto Villaldo's book. I really, really appreciate it. Um, so this is an interesting story. I think it's a long time since I've read this. Um amending the past that was a lovely version as well i can't remember which one we enter into the four worlds i think it was the same shaman healer sage it could have been that one amending the past yeah i think it was that one that that one's really good that one really will shift things in your psyche man um so this is about the uh uh, I've forgotten it, the name, I, all I can think of is Machu Picchu. Um, <laughs> it's about the um, American Quero um, form of uh, shamanism. Uh, and my, um, I can't remember the words for it. Um, so he has a little bit of criticism, but I, I really do actually enjoy reading his book we've got Sandra Ingerman's soul retrieval book as well um that's also a very good copy to have if you're interested in shamanism it's all about mending your soul by journeying and um, bringing back soul parts to reintegrate them into your life here um, and then we've got John Rasmussen, I'm kind of skipping around, Dreaming a World Into Being. He's a student of Alberto Villaldo's, he's now teaching. 
and um, this is a lovely little book. I really loved the beginning of this book and then I kind of lost it halfway through. I put it down and I picked it up again I didn't quite pick up the thread that I had but I really launched into that book with a lot of enthusiasm. And um, Angel Tech, now this is an old book, Antero Alley. Now this is a uh, foreword by Robert Anton Wilson and this is a modern shaman's guide to reality selection and this talks about the levels of your being and how to reprogram and get yourself out of certain um, flutes you got yourself into so we've got physical gear is first gear and we have different alerts like confusion alerts and how to mend it so um, a sitting meditation avoidance um, bringing your body with you so this is first gear pretty vacant so it's all the problems that you may find going on in each of your chakras so this is a kind of will not get rid of this book I don't read it very often but it is a really lovely place to get out of Chapel Perilous which is where you get stuck and um, it really does address everything that might might be difficult to get your head around everything so there you go Angel Tech lovely book and moving on we've got loads to cover um one spirit medicine alberto i've not read that um it was bought for me from friend from friends the process of changing the way you think um hedwich patrick jasper lee he is a gypsy shaman uh, you can find him on youtube He's written lovely books. This is um, the only copy I've got now. But We Borrow the Earth was his uh, really his first book and it really sort of hit home with a lot of people so that had a lot of publicity. This is, I think, his last book, Coming Home to the Trees. And he writes from the perspective of an ancient gypsy, an ancient gypsy sh shaman. <laughs> so I love those. Um, the Barefoot Doctor, who remembers the Barefoot Doctor? Um, this is the Urban Warrior, this is about using Tai Chi and uh, shamanically using sort of exercises like Tai Chi and Qigong and I can't remember what they're called. Um, so an exercises, not magic, Tutel and Penry. Um, yeah, it was a nice little magic book. It's packed with information. I found it a little bit laborious um, and she really goes into the far end of a piece of string about it um, but it's I think it is one of the only books on that magic you will find and it's got everything in it. Um, Tucson Penry, an introduction to anglo saxon magic and witchcraft. Yes that's a lovely little handbook, light read, it just um, some of the history of the Anglo-Saxons and a little bit of their traditional legacy in Britain. Embracing the Moon Galilean. Yeah, that's an alright book. I wouldn't go out of my way to buy it. It's very old now. Um, it does have some lovely little spells. Spells for glamour, spells for self-love, things like that. When we've got the Drunvalo Malka sex, and these are heavy. <laughs> uh, Living in the Heart, this comes with a CD, and these are about breathing techniques. It's um, it's a nice little volume, but if you want a Drunvalo, you've got to get these two. Um, the Ancient Secret of the Flower of Life. Um, read both of those volumes, and it'll blow your head. <laughs> But they're quite expensive, and I think to get, you know, to get the two, sometimes, you know, a bit of an imposition. But really, if you're into ancient uh, secret geometry, um, all sorts of Egyptian um, associations and higher level being consciousnesses, <laughs> that's a terrible way of saying it, read and follow those books. Um, Right, skipping on. So, 
Um, just some volumes, little books of spells, Guide to India. I never read that and I still haven't. And I went, uh, My Way Osho, got to have a guru or two on your bookshelf. Autobiography of a Yogi, I love this book. I love dipping into that. Um, so you see where I got, but I can pick that up and carry on reading and I'll remember the rest of the lot. Then I've got my teaching kind of style is Iyengar. So I've got books on Iyengar yoga, which are great. If, like me, you're getting a bit old and you don't want to do lots of jump-ins. <laughs> so we've got the Tree of Yoga and we've got the Pranayama, which was a gift from my sister for Christmas. So I've got all three of those because my Illustrated Light on Yoga, they don't sell this copy anymore which is a shame. I think they only sell a copy like that in India now and it's it's really been torn apart. <laughs> so a bit of bodywork therapy in here, you know. Bodywork, breathwork is very important and he is very, very bendy. And it's got a nice little course at the, big at, at the back. Um, a one week course or a learn a course of 12 weeks or something um, and the this light on yoga has even the advanced positions am I overselling yoga here and as we're down here I've got did I ever tell you how lucky you are by Dr Zeus because that was my childhood book and it's really good I love Dr Zeus you've got to keep that one haven't you um, what else have we got? We've got some psychology books, gardening books. This is the other Murray Hope, The Serious Connection. So I was quite into Egyptian mysteries at the time. This has, um, yeah, The Ancient Secrets of Egypt. And um, where's the cartouche? Way of the cartouche. That's also, I think, by Murray Hope, and that's a brilliant book. Um, so I've got a little spirit for my ancestors' altar kit. I like the idea. Amy Zerner and Monty Farber, they made lovely cards to do with your animal guides as well, which I might find later. And then I've got this. <coughs> Which is a guide to English folk tales in the English language. Now this, for me, I'm interested in folk tales. This is really just a reference book. It cost me a few quid actually. And it just lists the um, classification of Anne Thompson fairy tales. So any tale you want, any kind of classification, any sort of... You can look up tales and it will tell you sort of tales that are to do with the Beauty and the Beast or tales that are to do with um, a lion in the water. <laughs> Animal tales, magic tales, um, and you can look it up. The Vampire Suitor is a classification and it will tell you some examples of those kind of tales so you can go and find them as a resource i think fairy tales have got so much more in them than um, most of us really and there are so many more than most of us know as well but i just thought that was a really nice way of dipping into fairy tales so, if you've not heard of it, the Ann Thompson classification system just groups them all into motifs that are very common throughout Europe and the world, in fact. And then I have a few more books. The Witch Must Die, Shadow and Evil of the Witch in Fairy Tales. Um, Marie, Mary Louise von Franz is quite a renowned author on fairy tales. So I've got two of hers, 
although I haven't read those yet. Mercy Alia Shamanism, that's a must. Uh, Archaic Techniques of Ecstasy, because it's a classic on shamanism, although it may be a little outdated now. Then I have some Native American shamanism and um, spirituality. So, Rainbow Medicine, Visionary Guide to Native American Shamanism. Um, and I just bought these second hand. Um, I've got some more over here. Oh, where have they gone? Where's my little collection? Oh, here. Right next to it. Then I've got Native Healer, an introduction to an ancient art by Medicine Grizzly Bear Lake. This is the one I'm actually reading, Buffalo Woman Comes Singing, Brook Medicine Eagle, I'm really enjoying that. Um, there's a real feel for how it feels to be initiated into your own culture as a Native American there. Uh, Spirit Clans, this is a lovely little, I use it as <clears throat> an oracle deck just by opening a page and it gives me a spirit animal. And they're really spot on reading, so uh, yeah, David Carson, Spirit Comes. So that is really my collection, apart from the Four Agreements, Don Miguel Ruiz. Um, a few of this and a few of that. I've got um, some Doreen Virtue, actually, I remember her. <laughs> And I've got a selection of herbs and Medicinal Chef, the Encyclopedia of Herbs, Body Massage, my little book to remind me of Cypress and the Charity Shop. Look at that. Just look at that. <laughs> um, the Handmade Pottery, this is a lovely collection, nice book, just simple recipes, a few sort of um, bathroom toiletries a few bits of food to make um this is my recent purchase in a charity shop <coughs> excuse my voice again herbs roger phillips and nikki foy um how to go and gather herbs and i love this book because it's actually set out in the over the course of so this kind of place is things that in Britain you are likely to see and are likely to find at certain times of the year. Then it's got a really good piece of folklore about it. It's got um, the appearance of it. It's got some medicinal uses for it. Um, and it's got some very good pictures for it. So I'm not the kind of person who carries a phone around, so I don't use picture this or anything like that. Um, what I tend to do is sort of come back and look and look, <laughs> which means that I don't always get it right. But um, yeah, it's got all sorts of things in, so I really like that. So if you see that, pick that up. <clears throat> and I'll put it next to all my charity shop finds. Oops. So we've got books on organic gardening and com combined gardening, combination gardening, companion planting, that's the word. Um, and although I'm kind of very enthusiastic about it, I kind of just garden by intuition. Then we have um, The Good Spell Book, Jane Kemp, Love Charms, Magic. I've got that in a charity bargain book, it's okay. Uh, the Witch in Witch's Ways in the Welsh Borders. I'm enjoying reading that, but um, I've not got very far into it. It's more of a sort of documentary of modern witches and what they consider to be their practice rather than... There's a little bit about the traditional uh, Welsh ways in there, but it's very much asking modern witches what their beliefs are. Frankie Castania, Castania, Castania. Um, spells change. Lovely little. Look at the cover on that. It's lovely, isn't it? 
Makes you want to read that one. I read it, it's a beginner girl, well I read the beginning of it, sorry, I read the first chapter of it. Um, and it's a beginner guide, it covers all sorts of aspects of witchcraft um, and spell work. I can't really say anything until I've read it about that, to be honest. Um, so I'm not going to comment just that uh, she is the chaotic witch ant, of course. And uh, this is her book. Uh, Sadia the Gate is Open, we talked about this before, it's a nice little introduction into Sadia with some practical knowledge, um, some practical exercises to try and some historic knowledge. It's a nice little read. Um, the Nine Worlds of Sade Magic, I still haven't had a look at this yet. Um, Jenny Blaine, it's supposed to be a good source of uh, Sadia magic, especially if you're British, she's a British author. Um, so she's one of our renowned authors when it comes to, to heathenism. <coughs> oh, I've got a sore throat now. This I picked up in a cherry shop. This is about the persecution of the witches. And it is quite interesting, to be honest. Again, I'm only a couple of chapters in, um, but it, it really goes into the politics of it all as well. And it's a no-nonsense read about persecuting witches. Six Ways, Aidan Watcher. Um, I've started reading this. I found it a little bit of a beginner guide to me, a kind of 101 into traditional witchcraft. But to be honest, I've read two chapters or something he, he goes in he's got a brilliant approach to um, asking you to think about certain ways in which you do things certain attitudes you have it's not just a do this and do that it's sort of like well how would you do this considering that you are so and so and so and so um, as far as I remember that's um, so yeah, that is a good introduction guide to traditional witchcraft. Um, I've got my History of the Kings of Britain by Geoffrey of Monmouth, every word of it true. I kind of started reading that and I got stuck on the son of so-and-so had a son of so-and-so that had a son of so-and-so and was followed by so-and-so and went on for pages to be honest so i haven't got to the author bit yet <laughs> i just want to read merlin's madness right so if you're still here well done i've got um these two books about siberian shamanism by saran Gurel. Chosen by the Spirits and Riding Wind Horses, they're kind of companion volumes um, and they do cover every aspect of uh, learning how to be a, a Siberian, Mongolian style shaman. Then we have, and this is more factual, this is more from actual shamans, and then a lot of the New Age, no offence to this book, but a lot of the New Age kind of publications we get these days this is more a I went I asked and I wrote it down <laughs> um, and this is Saxon sorcery and magic obviously we are working in the dark when it comes to that so a lot of this is people's way of working this is Alaric Albertson's way of working with Saxon magic it's lovely it covers all topics of the Saxon uh, world, the Saxon soul parts, the Saxon mythology, weird working, um, and runes and divination. Yep, I enjoyed reading that. Haven't read The Devil's Plantation yet, but it comes highly recommended. And I think that is a must. Silence of the Trees, um, I've just about finished reading that one. Um, I really enjoyed the beginning of it. It's about the folklore of Cornwall and Devon, certain witches, stories, their persecution, their trials, their sort of advent. It's got a lot of uh, historic recordings of traditional witchcraft that came from the Museum of Boscastle. The Black Toad, I've not read that one yet. Um, and I will probably read it after the Silent as the Trees. Then there's this little lovely volume of Walk Cutting by Nigel G. 
Pearson and this is a traditional herbal grimoire that was passed on to him, a magical herbal. And so at one side it is a magical herbal that was passed on and on the other side is a different English modern herbal of his own writing. So it's it's a double-sided book. You can read it whichever way you like. <laughs> That's fun. And then of course The Devil's Do Dozen uh, by Jam Gary. 13 craft rights of the old one. Um, I think this is a more practical to do on traditional magic and traditional witchcraft, but I haven't read it. So that's my witch pile of to-dos, really. Um, now then I have these Slim Collection on Crystals. So the two authors here are Katrina Raphael and Guru Das. <laughs> Um, and I've got the three volumes, Crystal Healing, Crystal Transmissions and Crystal Enlightenment. And they were written a while ago and they cover every new age aspect of every crystal that has major significance. And ones that you didn't even knew you had in your collection. So this will cover your sort of record keeper crystals, your generator crystals, your Isis crystals, um, as well as this is rose quartz, this is obsidian and this is its properties. Then I came across this many years ago in my friend's caravan <laughs> and he got it from Glastonbury and this is Gem and Lixies and Vibrational Healings by Guridas and it is a channeled book with your star sign associations, your karmic troubles um, and which gem elixir you need to sort it all out. Um, I bought volume one but to be honest the one that really was quite interesting at the time was the one that he had was volume two and I chased it up for years and they just reprinted it so this is now a new version of Gem Elixirs and Vibrational Healing by Guru Das. Um, so if you're into weird and wonderful and wacky gem elixirs, that's definitely a must. Then I have a few New Age books up here and we have uh, Sanaya Roman and of course we have Soul Love which is the famous Sanaya Roman. Then I bought the Personal Power, Opening to Channel, Creating Money and Spiritual Growth versions. And I love these, I will always keep these around, especially like opening to channel and soul love and occasionally creating monies, very good. And I just treat them as bibliomancy books, they're channeled books so I trust my luck to dip in, open a page and whatever is on that page is usually quite interesting and pertinent. So I've got a lot of those, um, uh, H.J. Kramer publications and um, some Reiki books, some cards, my card collection. I don't really have that many anymore. Um, these are beautiful. The Spirit of the Animal Oracle. Oh, I'm turning it the right way around for you. A beautiful artwork on those. Um, and yeah, you can feel the vibration from here, can't you? How lovely those cards are. So that's my favourite deck, although it's not the one I use most. Some cookery books, because I'm not a great cook. <laughs> and I don't read them, to be honest. Some more um, tarot cards and things. The Little Witch's Tarot. I bought without a book, which is why I had to buy all the other tarot card books, because sometimes... You need the answers that the people have given for the cards. It didn't really work without that, but they are lovely cards. Um, I quite like the designs on those. And some more, of course, we've got the Brian Froud deck, the Heart of the Fairy Oracle, which has some lovely artwork. Then I've got this, which cost me lots of money. Um, and I bought the book and the cards of the Anubis Oracle. Um, which is Shamanic Journeys into the Mysteries of Egypt um, and it really does cover quite a lot of information. Hold that that way for you. 
um, a book and then a oracle deck and if you buy the oracle deck it also has room to put the book in so that becomes a nice little volume but it costs you about 50 quid <laughs> um, Wild Wisdom of the Fairy Oracle, Lisa Cavendish, their lovely cards the Isis Oracle, I didn't like it so much, I've got to be honest um, Alana Fairchild um, I think I prefer that, but that, that one really takes some grafting you can't just pull a card and read it you have to do the whole path working <laughs> um, Wildwood Tarot, lovely deck, Druid Tarot um, Druid Craft Tarot, Book of Runes, Ralph Blom of course and Carbon Monoxide Detector, I'll put that there <laughs> and um, Diana Cooper Ascended Masters, Angels of the Light and Ascended Masters, they're lovely, I like the Diana Cooper cards because I'm a bit of a new age flake, then we've got some Doreen Virtue the Palladium Workbook, this was a lovely book, the same kind of thing as Bioenergetics, Bodywork and Breathwork um, this is an old volume now but um, I'm keeping that around and uh, to be honest it's a little bit harder to get into than Bioenergetics but same principles this one's a bit more new age, it's taught by the dolphins um, I think that's just about covered it and then at the bottom here I've got lots of folk art books, how to draw, um, doing up old furniture, I love painted furniture, doing up old junk, um, stenciling, learn how to play guitar, that one's never been read, <laughs> play penny whistle, I've got a few tunes out of that one, <laughs> um, stenciling, folk art, reiki and other ways of healer by Kathleen Ann Milner, she teaches Reiki and Sakim and um, I became a Sakim master so she teaches Teramai so this is the first book Teramai My Journey Home she she um, puts lots of information in there about doing healing and new age practice um, and then she's also written this one Becoming a Shaman which are exercises um, in journeying. William Lee Rand's little Reiki book, that's lovely, pick a card and work on that issue uh, with a CD, but I don't have the CD. And the Illustrated Encyclopedia of Earth Mysteries by Paul Devereux, which I also picked up secondhand quite cheap. And it's just one of those little musts on your bookshelf. So I've actually managed to put all my books in one place um, and I thought I would show them to you. Um, I mean there's many more, I'm just going through them quickly but do you remember that one? The Life You Were Born To Live by Dan Millman where you find your life path number and it has a lovely little reading about your life path number in there. So these are going back a few years now. Um, and this is really a price collection. I would hate to sort of like thin them out too much, really. Um, and I, you know, I would miss a few if I, um, if I ever parted with them, I think. I would probably want to replace them again. So this is kind of the core section with quite a, a vast list that I've purchased recently that aren't getting read that quickly but I do dip in and read a chapter here and there so anyway so anyway oh it's starting to get hot in here so anyway oh dear <laughs> the light is now terrible what's down that bit <laughs> So anyway, I hope that was some interest to you. It's um, it's probably not as interesting as it is to me to look through bookshelves, maybe you're not, but um, I hope you kind of got something from that. It's beginning to get very hot in here, so excuse me if I don't edit this too much. It will go on and on. 
thanks for watching and uh, let me know your own favourite books in the comments below because I'd love to read them. All right, cheers. Have a good hot, 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 hot heat wave. <sighs> yeah, I'm going to stay inside, I think. Okay, <laughs> hope you enjoy the hot weather and oh, it's, it's lovely. See you soon. Bye.